But this is our little fake game show. It's meaningless. It's nothing, but we do it because it's kind of fun. So what we got here is we got six YouTube shorts queued up, uh, five of them numbered one through five. The sixth one, which is unnumbered, will be our last one. It's what I call my topic cleanser. The idea okay. is that we all leave here in a good mood, not dealing and talking about, you know, the usual stuff that we talk about all the time. Um, gotcha. So with that, Aaron, why don't you go ahead and choose the first uh, short between one or five? Well, I have to start with one because it says, you ready? You, you, all right, here we go. To preach Jesus because not everybody does that. So you need to cut it out and let people live their lives and be happy. So when you see someone who needs help, do you just ignore them and walk by? You know, when I see people that need help, I help them. That's what we're trying to do. So you might not agree with the message. That's why she's I'm talking to you, dude. Motivation. I'm trying to convey to you. The motivation is helping others. The motivation is encouraging others. The motivation is bringing them to what I believe is eternal life. If I'm truly convinced that this is the way of life and I just keep it to myself, I will be selfish. I wouldn't be someone who loves my neighbor. So you might not agree with the method. You might think that some other way is better. This is what I'm convinced and convicted is the truth. So if I don't share it, I'm not doing my neighbor a service. I'm not trying to put anyone down. I'm actually trying to lift them up. You are definitely trying to put everyone down. Yes, you are. Uh, it's not truth because it's not verifiable. You can't show any truth to it. No actual fact that backs up your or your, your or supports your position whatsoever. It's all empty assertions of impossible absurdity. And you're and you're pushing those on other people, fully aware that there are other religions all over the world who say that it it's their absolute fact that a completely different pantheon of gods and a wholly unrelated scripture exist, and that theirs is the absolute truth and the and and the revealed word of the one true God, even though it's completely different gods. So all these people making empty assertions are just doing so so that they can manipulate the masses and encourage their own fantasy because, hey, if you're the only one that believes in this, this ridiculous myth, well, then you're called crazy. But if you can convince other people to believe in it too, now you're safe in your delusion. You just need the, you need the, uh, the other people to back you up that, hey, I'm not insane because all these other people believe the same stupid bullshit that I make believe. Even though none of us really believe it, we all pretend because it makes us feel nice and squishy inside to imagine that we're best friends with the, big, with the most powerful being imaginable because we imagined it. And then we will ignore all of the evidence that proves we're wrong because we already know on some level that we're wrong, but we're also so philosophically skewed that we think that if you believe something hard enough, it will become true. So we have, com we have confirmation bias where we'll only believe and only accept, only hear the things that we think support us and will ignore absolutely everything else because faith is the most dishonest position that is possible to have. It's used only as a means of manipulation of the masses so that the clergy can gather 10% of your income and will probably have plenty of alone time with your favorite children. Wow. Talk about understanding the assignment, right? The, the, the second the short ended, it was just like everyone just duck and don't get any on you because here comes iron. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I just want to know, like, who does this approach work on? Like, who is their target mark for these street preachers? Like, is there really somebody that's just going about their day? They're walking down the sidewalk. They've never been exposed to any of the ideas of Christianity or any of the major religions of the world. They're just going about their day. And some guy tells them, you, you're going to hell. And they're like, what? What's this? I had no idea. Like, and like they start listening and their, their mind is convinced by some guy off the street telling them these things. Like in what scenario does this methodology ever work on anybody? Like, have they ever, these guys that go out here on the street corners, like every weekend, have they ever in their lives had a success by right. doing that? In the promotional oh, video, so. the, in the promotional yeah. video for the unholy Trinity down under. Seth said the same thing. We were in, I think, Melbourne, Australia. And Seth, Seth is talking about the street preachers that they have down there. And he said, has that ever actually worked? Has anybody ever come up and say, you know what? You're absolutely right. And just yeah. nobody. <laughs> you walk by these people and, and you think, okay, these are, these are carnival barkers. You know, back away slowly. Don't make eye contact. So I have a little bit of a different approach where like, I think just because of the fact that I enjoy arguing with these people like too much, like there's something wrong in my brain where I actually enjoy it and like get ener energized by it. So I can't I even relate. 
<laughs> I usually go and like, you know, I spare other people from their attention by just asking them like all I pretend to be the mark that they're looking for. Like I will go and I'll ask them inquisitive questions. And then like my questions will just slowly, slowly get more and more unhinged just to like mess with them. And I'll like talk to them for as, as much time as I have available, like because at my university, they, these street preachers were all over and like some of them were just really abhorrent, like like re revolting in their behavior. Like they would be telling you like, you young woman, you have short hair, you're going to hell. And I would just <laughs> go up there and I'd be asking them like, I'll, I'll be like, okay, okay. So I get that masturbation is a sin, but what if I'm doing it while reading the Bible? Like, and, like, <laughs> and I'll just be asking them these questions where like, I'm like, they're like, are you messing with me? Are you not? And I'm like trying to just mess with them and waste their time, basically. Let, let me just experiment with that for a moment. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so all the males among the little ones. And they... <laughs> all right, that's it. Our very yes. first episode ever. We now have a meme of Aaron doing things to the Bible. Um, yeah, I mean, these, these street teachers very much, I don't see how it's much different than like being mugged on the street with a whole lot of like, distasteful information in the first yeah, place it's an assault of my ears yeah, yeah. And sometimes my person <laughs> right well um awesome absolutely amazing let's let's assault our ears a little further and since you brought it up earl why don't you pick the next one uh oh i'll go with two. Oh. <laughs> Nobody should choose the that image. Guy. The images don't necessarily completely represent the video. They're almost it's, like it's the upside down Bible. Movie. I love, I just, I love that photo. I defend right and wrong by the guidebook that I built my life upon, and that is the Word of God. An objective standard for what is true, what is right, and what is honest. And when you say to me, you don't have the right to impose that on government, I'm saying to you, you do not have the right to restrict me from my influence on government. And I will have a voice, and the church should be that voice. We have been browbeat into a corner believing in the separation of church and state. And I want to remind you again that the separation of church and state was not intended to protect the government from religious intrusion. It was intended to protect the church from government oversight so that we would have a free, clear voice. And I would challenge you this morning to reclaim that voice, to reclaim that position, and be that voice in our communities that confronts the evil around us. You really need to stop after every sentence, since absolutely every <laughs> single sentence he just said is another lie. Wrong. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if you build your narrative on a lie, then the whole thing is going to fall apart yeah right? if every if all you believe are lies then you will lie for those beliefs and and that's what he's doing yeah you you don't have a right to overturn our constitutional uh first uh amendment for example uh it and and what what let's i want to be systematic just start with the first thing he said and move on through it sure yeah let's play that again stop every after every sentence oh okay uh I defend right and wrong by the guidebook that I built my life upon, and that is the Word of God. Okay, stop. Objective okay, stop, 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 we have multiple lies just in the first sentence. Yeah. Okay, so the words of ignorant, bigoted, superstitious savages are not the Word of God. These are the, er these are the words of, of primitives who didn't know where the sun went at night who tried to justify their own inhumanity against their fellow man by pretending that God authorized them to perform all of these genocides and, and, and to subjugate all these women and hamstring all their horses and all this shit. No, everybody that claims falsely, because they all claim falsely, if, if, if they claim falsely, that if, they, if they claim that the Bible is their source of morality, then why aren't they murdering and raping and destroying and genociding everything, you know, like, like God commands? Every Christian is more moral than that repugnant tome that they claim to be the source of, of objective morality, because that's another lie that he told that I just remembered. It's not objective, it's subjective, because it's the opinion of whoever is pretending to speak for God. And if there was a God, then it would be his subjective opinion, because you don't get a reason why something is moral or immoral. It's just because somebody said so. That's not a reason. 
what's the reason that it's moral or immoral? And if the, and if the, if the, if the subjective person, if the voice of God, the self-appointed prophet who wants all your tithing, if they can't tell you what the reason is, then there is no reason. It's just their opinion. It's subjective. Let's move on to the next sentence. Sure. What is right and what is honest. And when you What is honest, that, you guys you lie you constantly. Lie. And not only do you lie constantly, but your God lies too. Oh, God is not a man that he should lie. But God also brags about lying. That if, if a scribe says something wrong, it's because I have deceived that prophet. <laughs> yeah, wow. God brags about the lies that he does. There's no truth to any of this. Move on to the next sentence. To impose that on government, I'm saying to you, you do not have the right to restrict me from my influence on government. Stop. Yes, yep. we do have the right to restrict him from impo from imposing upon our rights. He does not have that right. That's guaranteed in the Constitution, which you have to defend, by the way. The Constitution can't defend itself, especially when our own government is attacking the Constitution, which they are, systematically. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, move on to the next one. Government, and I will have a voice, and the church should be that voice. We have been browbeat into a corner. Bullshit, you asshole! You being the dominant demographic who own and control everything, you always you're such a fucking cry bully. You don't you you not have been browbeat into a corner. You're controlling everything and manipulating everything and oppressing everybody and suppressing science and everything else. You are the shit stain on the planet, and your claim to be oh we're so persecuted. Fuck you. Separation Sorry. church I'll, I'll and try state. to be a little bit more passionate. And I want to remind you again that the separation of church and state was not intended to protect the government from religious intrusion. It was intended to protect the church from government oversight. No, it wasn't. It was meant to protect the people from the fucking church because the founding fathers saw what had been done in Salem and they saw how the laws had been manipulated for religious disorder and they realized, no, we, we're not doing that shit here. It's like when the Puritans came over here because of religious persecution, we were pretending to be so persecuted because you were fucking dicks in your own country until they fucking threw you out. So they come over here and then the Puritans start shitting on the Quakers, right? And they start torturing each other. So Christians per persecuting each other's Christians. And then the, the founding fathers said, no, this is all bullshit. We're keeping religion the fuck out of our, out, out of our legal system because every single time that religion has had control of their law, the result has always been an automatic violation of human rights. And, and time Thomas Jefferson was explicit, in, in, and a number of other founding fathers were too, in why you cannot have religious influence in government. It wasn't to protect religion. It wasn't to protect the government. It was supposed to protect the people from the combination thereof. If I can, really quickly, just to piggyback off of what Arne was saying, like a number of founding fathers explicitly came out against exactly what this preacher is saying. Like John Adams signed the Treaty of Tripoli that literally says, the United States government is in no way, shape, or form based upon Christianity or values. Like this is a long history in in the United States. The founding fathers were not inspired by Christianity or Christian values. They didn't want Christian values. They were inspired by the Enlightenment, which was a reaction against these Christian values that had dominated since the medieval era. And like when you put Puritans in charge, other Christians, I'm talking to you. When you put these puritanical people like this in charge. What did they do? These people banned Christmas. Like literally in England, they banned Christmas. Who wants these people in charge? Not even other Christians. Indeed. Um, I didn't know that I could pause the shorts in my little presentation that way. So I very quickly <laughs> learned on the fly when Aaron says, stop the fucking thing. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm doing it. Um, hey, nice anyways. job, Justin. Good looking at <laughs> You make me sound like a diva. That's not how I wanted to come across. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I, this is awesome, Ari. This, no, awesome. this is this is this is the, I'm this the only is literally the best episode on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's um oh crap. Hold on. Now I gotta go all the way back over here. So then okay. Um yeah, so yeah, so the, the Trump Bible thing that was the church and state kind of that's why it was there represented. That's why I say my images aren't necessarily there as a perfect representation of the shorts beneath, they're more of just like an enticing little flavor of what you might see. Um, with that, Earl, would, no, no, you picked that one. So Grayson, why don't you go ahead and pick the next one? And then Earl, if you could do me a wonderful favor and put a, a, a poll for us, um, to let the audience vote on which one will be the next one after Grayson chooses. 
I'm I've a little bit a, torn. I've never because, made a poll before. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. It's okay. We we just went in on two pretty obnoxious Christian <laughs> apologist videos. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm I'm I don't know. Number three intrigues me with the license plate saying prove it. Number four looks like a nice innocuous palate cleanser, but my my channel is about debunking pseudoscience and I love science. So number five looks like it's something about the geologic column, maybe. So let's go with number five. Let's let's get some science in here. All right. To preach Jesus oh. because that does not look like science. No, did I screw this up? Why evolution is a complete lie. Charles Darwin, who is famous for discovering evolution, said himself that his theory could not be definitively proven. And his partner, Alfred Russell Wallace, who came up with a theory of evolution through natural selection, said that it's impossible that natural selection can apply to humans. Okay? So clearly, the two founders of evolution debunked it. And I bet you didn't know that Albert Einstein did not believe in evolution at all. I bet they didn't teach you this in school, did they? Uh, you didn't right. go to school, did you? The, the last yeah. one for me is the funniest and easiest one because I didn't know Albert Einstein's opinion on evolution mattered. Yeah, I know that Albert Einstein didn't believe in God. So what's the option then? I mean, did not believe in God. It's not that, that Albert Einstein, he didn't believe in a personal God. He didn't believe in the Christian God. He spoke adamantly against the Jewish and Christian versions of God. He identified with Spinoza's God, but he said, from the perspective of a Christian, just consider me an atheist. I mean, even if, like, even if we were to take every single, like, complete lie and fabrication that that video claimed, even if we were to take all of that at face value as being correct, it in no way has any bearing on the validity of evolution at all. Like, like it, it, Einstein, brilliant guy, great theories. Newton was another brilliant guy, and Newton believed in alchemy. Does, does that mean yep. that we have to accept alchemy because Newton believed in it? Of course not. These are just genetic fallacies. They, they, now, Alfred Russell Wallace did, did uh, he started out as a scientist, but he did succumb to superstition or supernatural superstition. Right, he's he succumbed to to woo, and so he just he, he ruined his name in the annals of, in the annals of science. Darwin never said that his theory could never be proven, but nor need he say that because science already has a rule that no theory can ever be proven. Yep. Gravity still a fucking theory, right? But it's not like you don't have to worry. About, it's not like we don't have atomic energy. It's not like you don't have to worry about a nuclear threat because atomic theory is just a theory, right? It's like everything we know to be true is a theory. Every, uh, every modern scientific theory is both a theory and a fact. A atomic theory, for example, it's a fact that atoms exist. Look at the periodic table. That's another theory, the, the theory of chemical periodicity. You can't prove a body of knowledge. That doesn't make any sense. In, in science, they consider that nothing, that, that proof only exists in mathematics and that nothing can ever be proven in the positive sense. You can disprove something like, like they did with phlogiston, for example, when they came up with oxygen theory, when Lavoisier came up with oxygen theory, theory, never been proven. We know there's oxygen, but you can't prove oxygen because mathematic proof only exists in mathematics. Yes. Yeah, Darwin never said that Darwin never debunked his own theory in any way. He he offered a number of things that that would should be if if my theory is correct then we should see and we saw the things that he predicted, we saw them. We found them. He predicted uh, uh, Archaeopteryx discovered within 2 years. He predicted Australopithecus afarensis. It was 100 years later, but we got it and hundreds of them. And not just that one, but a dozen or a dozen or so other species similar to it that all would have fit the descriptions that he gave because he did he didn't call it Australopithecus African. He didn't he, he did gave descriptions of these things that Archaeopteryx should be a, a, a primitive bird with, with with reptilian features that also had three unfused wing fingers. With uh, Australopithecus, he described that that it that should be what we would consider an, an African ape. Right, like gorillas and chimpanzees, more than more than orangutans. So he's he's distinguishing it should be like an African ape, and that it should be halfway 
morphologically between those what we what that what they knew at the, at the time and people right so it the the teeth the hands the feet the the skull the the, the pelvis, all these different features about Australopithecus exactly match what Darwin was talking about. It's a, it is the halfway mark, is what he called at that time a missing link in the chain of being, which they know, nobody believes in it, you know, now that there is no chain of being. We don't look at it in terms of a chain anymore. It's, it's viewed as a tree of biodiversity. Evolution is the only theory of biodiversity, the only explanation, one and only. Creationism when they want to talk about where where you get multiple breeds of dogs, multiple species of dogs, all these different varieties of elephants, whatever, they have to cite evolution because that's the only option. They don't have another one. I've had, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the Australian creationist, John Mackay. He tried to make the argument to me that he had personally predicted a transition between lizards and snakes because he said, that's not evolution, that's devolution. And I'm like, dude, that's one kind to another. I don't know if you've been talking to Ken Hoven, but you guys would have a lot to talk about there. I would love to talk to him in all seriousness. Yeah. If he wants to talk about transitional on snakes, because the evolution of snakes includes vestigial features. Yep. It includes beneficial mutations. Mm -hmm. It includes um, the transitional species, lots of them, not just one a whole bunch of them for all these different nodes in their phylogenetic tree. So all these people who want to say that snakes came from God cursing a talk, a magically talking impossibility snake in, in the garden of Eden. If, if that's what you hold to, well, then you have to accept that all snakes derive from that one. Cause the Bible says so. Then you have to accept the incomplete phylogenetic tree, all the vestigial features, all the beneficial mutations, all the transitional species, all the shit. You have to accept full-on macroevolution. Yep. And they have tiny little hip bones. Yeah. <laughs> little eoprodocus you know? or najash. Tiny, tiny little hips. You know, it's like yep. it's kind of hard to say like they were just made that way. Like they're they're obviously little bitty hip bones. Yeah. Amazing. I have snakes um, here that have I have snakes in my house. You have snakes there? Have, what? I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I have obviously. snakes in my house that have little claws. Sticking out by the cloaca, oh, wow. that, that that are the remnants of their legs, mm -hmm. the, the oh, no little way. leg bones that only end in a claw. There's no there's no oh. toes anymore. It's just that right. one claw. They but use they them use to them. Help me. No, they, right? they, they they use them to stimulate their partner during coitus. Right, hubba hubba. It was recently discovered <laughs> that not only not only do snakes have hemipenes, which means double your pleasure, double your fun. But they, <laughs> but they also have dual clitori. Oh, great! That's just like twice as much to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> they can they can not find it twice. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think if there's two of them, I should be able to find one of them. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, yeah. Where do you go from there, other than just say, hey, "Let's move on." <laughs> um, uh, the poll uh, was overwhelming. At one hundred percent, people wanted to see number three. Um, so let's have a look at number three, and then we'll watch number four right after. Yeah, don't let him just say what a whole bunch of lies that I have to remember. For God's existence and why? So my favorite argument for God's existence is that I believe in free will. Okay, the reason that I think this is an argument for God's existence is because if you believe that human beings are essentially just balls of meat wandering around aimlessly in the universe, the kind of Spinoza's stone that thinks that it was. Mo moving of its own accord, but actually was thrown. If you believe that and you don't believe in free will, uh, then there's an internal coherence and logic to it. If you believe that you have the ability to make independent choices, that you can actually supersede your own, biolog uh, your, your own biological drives and the environment around you to any extent, even to the smallest extent, this means that you believe in something that can actually be proved by science, but that you are living every single day. And the notion that you have that will, and not only that you have that will, but that that will is capable of comprehending the universe around you, that your will is sort of, your ideas, your ability to comprehend the universe is a reflection of a reality, of an objective truth that is out there. That says to me that there is a God, that there's a common source that stands behind that objective truth and stands behind the mind that can comprehend that truth. Okay, so we cite a guy who's who's gotten famous, gotten rich and famous by being wrong about everything all the time. Yeah. So that puts him right up there with the rest of the clergy. His evidence of God 
is a thing that philosophers more or less unanimously agree does not exist. We don't have free will. More important, do we not have free will, is that you can't have free will in Christianity or Islam. Because both religions teach God controls everything you do. Every decision you make, it comes down to God. God is the one that hardens your heart. God is the one that when, when you're ready to cave in, God just says, no, no, we're going we're gonna to keep this game going so that not people die unnecessarily. And I'm going to I'm going to turn you and then keep you keep you going for a while. And then I'll let you go and let you suffer because of what I did to you. And in the Quran, it's even worse. God decides who's going to believe in him and who doesn't. He makes sure that people who are intelligent will never believe. And then he will punish them for never believing when it says explicitly in the Quran that he's the reason they don't believe because he forbade them from believing so that he could punish them later. So you don't have free will in Abrahamic religion. You don't. Well, technically, you don't anyway, but you can't, logically can't have free will in Christianity or Islam. I so his evidence is nothing. A thing that doesn't exist proves the thing that doesn't exist. I wish I could see Ben Shapiro trying to make this argument to a room full of Calvinists. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I know plenty of atheists who believe that we do have free will. I know plenty of religious people that think that we don't have free will and vice versa. There seems to be exactly zero correlation with belief in free will and belief in God. Like, two totally independent things. Like, both sides have both parties represented. It makes no sense. So. I, I feel I feel so privileged that I was in the room when I was at a conference in Canada somewhere where uh, somebody got on stage and he was, he, he was a philosopher promoting free will. And Daniel fucking Dennett is in the audience. So yeah. there was just what Dan, Daniel's a big guy. Yeah. So just watching him walk up to the microphone for Q and a, you could almost hear like the Darth Vader music. That <laughs> <laughs> was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I recently made a video on, what split brain experiments show us about our feeling of free will and how that's generated in the brain. It was pretty interesting. I'm someone that personally, I don't understand how free will could, could make sense given how brains work and physics. But even if you believed that there's some sort of supernatural soul or whatever, that's changing the movement of molecules in my brain, that's creating some sort of free decision and there's dualism that doesn't get you any closer to a God. You could just have some sort of magical soul in a godless universe. Yeah, we also don't have souls, and that's a huge thing. So it, that, the, the, the fact that neuroscientists and neurophilosophers, again, Daniel Dennett and Patricia, Church, Patricia Churchland have both told me directly, there's absolutely no support for mind-body body, mind, body dualism. Mm -hmm. I've talked to at least a half a dozen different neuroscientists and they all have the same unanimous conclusion. It's not just that there's no evidence of a soul. There's substantial evidence against a soul. We, there would be evidence of a soul right in these locations if it actually existed. But we've shown it's not in these. And, and we have evidence against these. All of these things that happen, or the, the chemical and, 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 uh, and, and, and um, what is it? The, the injurious kind of influences that you have over the mind. None of these would have an effect over an immortal soul. The fact that they can change your personality, change your drives, change everything about who you are by getting a rod stuck through your head or by taking the wrong drugs or by being by, by being uh, induced by some, certain toxins, right? All of these prove that the soul does not exist. Yeah, you can change somebody's personality and sense of morality by sticking them in a strong enough magnetic field. <laughs> there was one guy that suffered a tumor that when the tumor grew in his brain, it turned him into a pedophile. And oh, wow. when they removed the tumor, it completely changed his sexuality back to normalcy. Hmm. Wow. Go wow. figure that. <laughs> That's intense. A bad tumor. Bad tumor. Bad tumor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. So we got one more um, short to check out before our, our topic cleanser. And uh, so if you haven't hit that like button, do so right now. And if you have, well, thanks. We didn't tell you to do it yet, but next time. Listen. All right, here we go. Our next short. To preach Jesus. Because My tableau appears broken. Give me a sec. Oh, no. 
The, the values back then benefited men and ben o- men only. Okay, Women that's not true. Expected. That's not true. Women, when when men were men and they had more values, women got their values from the men. Now that the men are weak, women have no values because they don't have any way a uh, way of getting them. I'm gonna now pause it because Aaron's head's gonna blow up. Yeah. I, I got an interview with this guy. I had no idea because I, I, I accepted you guys' invitation. I have no idea who you are. right? Yeah. I'm just open to talking to people. I get an invitation from this guy. Hey, I got a show. It's got a large following. Would you like to be on? Okay, fine. I don't know anything about him. Never heard word one from this guy. But he has a lot bigger following than I do. And the other thing about him is that he is impressively goddamn dumb. Mm-hmm. I mean, fuck. I don't think I've ever seen somebody with as big a platform as him be that stupid. He's like he's stunning. Yeah. He's a white supremacist black man, right? It, it, and all comes to mind, you know, like the the, the blind guy. And he's that, just absolute misogynist he's too. He's black. I'm sorry to spoke. I, I didn't mean to speak over you. Oh, okay. uh, but 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 he's a complete misogynist too. He asked me, "Who do I hate more, my wife or my mother?" The fuck is wrong with you? I yeah. saw that. Dude. So he says, it was incredible. Ha- have you ever seen an ape turn into a human being? And then I have to explain to him how you don't see a dog turn into a dachshund. A dachshund already is a dog. Right from the moment it's born, it's already a dog. Mm-hmm. People are a subset of apes. You, you must can't. have said that 50 times and he yeah. just, just would not go in. And, and he just repeats the same question. Mm-hmm. And somebody else was telling me that that's all he does with every guest. He just repeats the same question as if the, as if it wasn't answered because his, his bread and butter comes from being so impressively fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I, I have to think that when he gets off this show, that he suddenly becomes very erudite. <laughs> I've oh, made really? Quite a number of downloads <laughs> this season. <laughs> 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 All right, well, um, yeah, so what anyways, you, you clearly like, have a history with him, which is one mm-hmm. of the reasons why I put this in here, because um, that particular conversation was replayed on, like, every channel on the internet mm-hmm. uh, back then. Um, but, yeah, we didn't watch the whole thing yet, so let's, let's, the last thing he said was men are now weak and women got their values from men. So he said that yeah, women... I'm, so- I mean, I'm I may be an older guy. Maybe I'm not completely in tune with the with the younger generation. But my generation, and to what I've seen, the current generation, I I know some strapping fucking lads that are also progressive, armed, leftist. I don't I don't understand the the stereotype that people have. I know somebody who's a full on hardcore leftist, much further left than me. He owns an arsenal of weapons, super fucking strong. Black, he's like the what is the top level of kung fu, right? Dude's fucking dangerous. Go right. tell him that when men were men. <laughs> right. It's also just the idea that if if women don't have men telling them what their values should be, yeah. then women have no way of figuring out what their values are. It's like what do you? He's like basically just othering women to the point where they are completely helpless without men to tell them what they should think. Yeah, it's it's just like I sometimes. Well, no, I'm not going to get into my talking about my family. I'm very proud of of my own kids as far as how how strong and how badass they mm-hmm. are. So if I can't yeah. talk about my own generation, I can look at my own children. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I've ever heard a parent say, "My kids are Peter, badass." I got a couple of kids you should meet. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get through the rest of this thing without choking on it. Will you shut up? I'm on a show. A point, but we have Andrea Ocasio Cortez now too. I mean, you know how nutty she is, though. She has no bad. She lived with a boyfriend. She's a socialist. She's out of her mind because she doesn't have a real man. Well, hold on a second. She doesn't have values because she's a socialist, and she doesn't have a real man. Yeah, what? Well, he doesn't know what a socialist is. Well, I don't know real who, man. Wait, how many of these right wingers know what the fuck a socialist? They think <laughs> Biden is a socialist, right? Well, they, they say that he's a radical leftist. You can't be a you can't be a leftist without being a radical leftist because that, that's what Fox News. They have to put that adjective on there all the fucking time, right? So they don't know what a moderate is. They don't know what 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 it means to be left of center and not radical. That that's that's all they know. 
So Biden is a radical leftist, which the problem everybody has on the left with Biden is that he's not a fucking leftist at all. Every president in my lifetime, and I'm 61, every president in my entire lifetime has been on the authoritarian right, not the libertarian left, which is where I am. And where Bernie is, and where Noam Chomsky is, and where Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is. You don't get presidents in that category. You know who the furthest left president of my lifetime is? I would have thought that it was JFK or that it was, or that it was, uh, how uh, long Jimmy ago, Carter. really? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't either of them. The one that, 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 that initiated or passed the most leftist policies, Richard Milhouse, Nixon. Yeah, and he was. Really? And he had to quit, didn't he? Yeah. He assault weapons ban. Yes. <laughs> you you want to know? Uh, you want to know who who actually pushed and passed an assault weapons ban? Nixon. Ronald Reagan. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Also, but, but it's the Democrats. It's the leftists. It's the the, the socialists that you need to wear. Uh, sure. <laughs> People right. on the right are constantly like saying, "Oh, the left." can't even say what a woman is and then this guy over here is saying that aoc who they called andrea ocasio cortez yeah. like her name is alexandria like they, they didn't even get her name right but they said she does she lives with her boyfriend and doesn't have a real man in her life like huh do you well, know what a man a is? You define one because like she's living with a man like look at he's like over six feet tall he's got a beard like it's easily identified it this way. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. The last name has two syllables. The middle name has four syllables. The first name has five syllables. And look who we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you got to shorten it to like two syllables max. <laughs> like AOC. <laughs> right, let's see what else is said in here. And I'm, we're going to have to disagree on that one because I think. Women can be strong and independent and alone, and they don't need men. They just get a career, work, and be happy. Have That's you, it. Have you ever seen a strong woman? Yep. I have. I've seen plenty of them. I've been to multiple women marches. <laughs> <laughs> that little laugh at the end is a little triggering, isn't it? Yeah, what, what is that? <laughs> you got you. Have you ever seen this supposed strong woman? Like, that's his right. gotcha? Like, yeah, no shit. I, who hasn't seen a strong he, woman? He what? probably hasn't because he's so repulsive that no woman would get close to him. I can see that. There would be, there's a reason for him to be misogynist because it's clear why women would not like him. Mm -mm. And well, evidently he's gay. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say the, 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 new, the new conspiracy is that he's. No, it's not a conspiracy. He was, no? he was caught. He was caught. Oh, was with... he just straight up caught? Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody that used to work, like that used to work on, at, like with him in his studio or whatever, like this younger, you know, guy was saying that there was definitely a relationship there. So mm -hmm. well, that's, that's uh, the other thing. Isn't he gay? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's we what I was just saying. Is, that he's, is, yeah. is he homophobic at the same time? Absolutely. Yeah. You'd have to be. That's his whole MO. Mm -hmm. If I he mean, he wasn't before. He's the definitely hypocrisy now. Is, is I think that we firmly established that self hatred is this guy's mo. Yeah, it, like, it's it's yeah, it's internalized. Um, you know, homophobia. It's in, it's internalized. These racism. are the guys who masturbate while crying, mm -hmm. while reading the Bible <laughs> and crying. <laughs> Pages are all stuck together. <laughs> I mean, hey, there's a reason why Jesus is always pretty shredded up on that cross. Okay. Yeah. 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 Telling telling them to sacrifice to to forsake their families and to love only him mm -hmm. above all else, these 12 mm -hmm. guys. And I think Paul said that every nobody should have a wife. I think Paul Paul was saying mm -hmm. that all the real Christians should renounce their wives. You know? yeah. um, well, he didn't say celibate, he just said wives are not cool. <laughs> well, yeah. One of them said that they should be celibate. I, I suspect that Paul would have been very enthusiastic about receiving a call from a stripper a stripper Roman guard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, well, um, that's the end of all of our, our main shorts. We've just got the topic cleanser left. And what I like to do before we get onto that first is let's do some uh, channel shout outs for everybody. So 
Um, Grayson, what do you got going on in the next week and where can people find you on the internet? Uh, yeah, so my channel is Based Theory. Uh, I just put out a video debunking William Lane Craig's latest diatribe that he went on about it was how- very good by the way thank you yeah i i aren't i'm sure if you're not familiar with his argument specifically on this you've probably heard it from christians before but it was particularly evil and revolting with the comments that william lane craig recently made where he was pointing out that the canaanites were deserving of genocide because they were so evil with their child sacrifice and he literally said this that killing the canaanite children was a blessing because you're sending them to heaven. And he said that he really thought about who was it that was actually wronged in the genocide of the Canaanites. And he said, it, it, it's not the Canaanites. It's not their children. It's not their animals that the Israelites slaughtered. No, the conclusion that he came to with who was wronged was the Israelite soldiers who had to kill all those women and children and probably develop PTSD from it. That's the only, he said, that's the only people that were wronged in the genocide of the Canaanites. So I had to put out a video discussing that atrocity and debunking the actual factually incorrect statements he made about the Canaanites doing bestiality and child sacrifice and how that's so well recorded in history. So I just put that out. I'm probably gonna debunk uh, Jordan Peterson's stupid nonsense that he just came out with about climate change in the next week or so. So look out for that. And yeah. again, there's always an open channel on my uh, an open challenge on my channel to all the young earth creationists who want to debate this subject. And it's been like like it, they have all shied away from this challenge for like the last two months. I've been trying to chase down a debate with young earth creationists. And I've gotten people in my comments who are literally like, I shall debunk you, and I am the antithesis of evolutionary biologists. <laughs> actually quote. And then yeah. I emailed him and I'm like, yeah, let's set up this debate. And then I've emailed him three times now. Hey, you were talking mm -hmm. all that good stuff in the comments. Why, why aren't you responding now? And like that has Keyboard been the, warriors. that's been the story over and over and over again. All these people were saying I could easily just destroy this whole guy's whole belief system with one hand behind my back. Then I follow up and they're nowhere to be found. So yeah. where are the creationists with some courage to stand by their worldview and actually debate these subjects please open had a, had a challenge up for years that no more than a decade <laughs> nobody's bitten on that one well yep. and with that Arn, two questions for you where can people find you on the internet or what do you got going on this week and what are you drinking oh this was a mix of things uh all local brews revolver which is a local brewery. Uh, they 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 make uh, the blood and honey is made of blood orange and actual honey, and the temptress from Lakewood Brewery. And this is a nine or ten percent ABV Imperial Milk Stout. And then what are you up to this week? Well, next week, next week, uh, one week from today, I will be in Philadelphia for the American Atheist National Convention. So if you're in the vicinity of Philly. Come on down to the convention hotel. Let's hang out and argue. Cool. Nice. Not that I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and and sometimes you can find you, uh, we can find you on at Arn Ra on YouTube as well, once in a while. Oh, yes. And, and uh, patreon.com forward slash A-R-O-N-R-A. This, this is my sole gig, my sole means of sustenance. So need all the help I can get. Yeah. Has anyone called you Aaron yet today? <sighs> Not yet today, no. <laughs> For some I reason, anytime I'm, anytime, yeah, every time I'm watching you, wherever it may be, when someone or when people talk about, I mean, you you must know this. Even when you're not there, you're brought up constantly, and they always call you Aaron. And I want to be like, "Where's the Streamyard link? Let me in here," because it <laughs> triggers me so hard, and I don't know why. It does it me too. I will be in the chat, yeah. and you'll be on a debate or something, and somebody, you know, will say. You Aaron. seem to let it go it's pretty hard. easily, like, but for me, it's just like <laughs> maddening. The, the thing that annoys me most about that is when when I get an email message, and there my my name is in the signature, right? And they'll write back and add an A to it. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's, yeah, extra dumb. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, yeah, before we move on, I'll let everybody know this is Wavelink. This is mine and I killed Earl's channel. We're gonna build it from here. So I need you guys all in the chat right now to be like sharing this video out to everyone and be like, 
check out the cool colors they got on their background because that took a week between Earl and I just like fist fighting and things. Good thing we're not in actual same room together. Shit would get thrown <laughs> when her and I are at work together. Um, it took us about right. three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so with that, you, some of you are already familiar with this little show. We do deep six. We do it every week. We're going to do it next week. Um, but I haven't decided who's going to be on next week yet. Grayson, you want to be our guest next week? I'm down. Yeah. All right. Then there we go. We got Grayson (laughs) on deep six next week. That's how fast we work here. at. Wow. Um, and, uh, I believe the very following week we've got the Kentucky atheist is going to be on deep six as well. Um, and keep an eye out for Earl's own video show called Black Pearl. We're working on that. We're still workshopping it, but we'll get there. And our flagship show for our channel that no one has seen yet, but we're going to do an episode real soon. It'll be the open platform. The general discussion is frequency. Um, and the first episode will be what's the meaning of this. In other words, it'll just be Earl and I uh, talking to you guys about what it is our goals are here at this channel. Um in any case, let's check out the last short. It's our topic cleanser. It's important because we want to leave everybody uh, everybody to leave here happy and in a good mood. So let's watch something a little bit lighter. I'm on camera. Hey, God. What's up, little brother? Hey, Gabriel, come join us. Why is Lucifer here? Uh, apparently, the Church of Satan is now a recognized religion. So as per his contract, he gets to make at least one dog breed. That's right, bitches. And I've got the paperwork. That's actually really helpful. Thank you. Look at this. Just like old times. Okay, so you want to make a Chihuahua? No, it's Chihuahua. Okay, Chihuahua. Small breed, apple-shaped head, and the anger of 10,000 men. <laughs> yeah, that was Vlad's idea. Because its dick is home. longer than its legs. In that time? happens. Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I'm always angry. What's the diet like? I was thinking they feed off the souls of bad dog owners. Ooh, I like the sound of that. No, no, we're not doing that. You just suck the fun out of everything. What is this tab labeled violent shaking? Oh, yeah, I couldn't think of a personality, so I just put the first thing that came to my mind. God, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know if you're familiar with this guy, Aaron, but he does. I I have seen him a number of times. My my wife uh, follows him as well. Yeah, he does impressions of dogs and these little skits and stuff. And um, I knew you were a dog guy as well as a lizard guy. And I was like, let's put something fun up there about dogs. Yeah. And uh, how do you feel about chihuahuas, Arn? Uh, well, they're all right as long as they'll fit in a tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't they originally bred for they actually a, were. a yes. snack on the go? They actually were. I was I was toying with doing a video this week about some of the, the, the some of the ethical issues that that we all it's my little chihuahua oh look at you <laughs> he's 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 actually a really big chihuahua <laughs> <laughs> as chihuahua so. yeah this is how we get the views on our channel we just put dogs on camera and we win yeah, yeah that's most of my shorts yeah <laughs> so i was i was thinking about doing an ethical thing about about uh it, how we recognize that we're not we're not the only species that has a soul, right? When nobody has a soul, but I mean, so we're not appreciably significantly different from or distinct from other animals. And so eating other animals got an ethical problem with it. Somebody suggested that we could uh, improve the uh, the meat market and, and it's, uh, it's CO2 emissions or what methane emissions if we convert to eating snakes. And how does that I work? Know, I just I just have a huge fucking problem. I've eaten snake. I admit I had rattlesnake. I live in Texas. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you live in rattle. You live in Texas. You eat rattlesnake at some point. Um, but but the idea of, of I don't know. I'm just I'm having I'm having an ethical issue with that. And converting to a, like a rattlesnake diet would cut down. You're not talking about rattles. rattlesnakes. You're talking about pythons and boas, right? Because they're larger. Yeah. Um, so they don't emit like methane gas. Yeah, they don't. They, they're they're not inclined to fart. They don't eat. They're not grass fed. Right. So you know, but isn't, the rats are. Wait, I but feel isn't, like that could ahead, be a Jason. great shirt, Arn. Snakes oh. don't fart. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. Yeah, but that might put him in the position of being on one side of that fence, and and like he would no longer have. You know, he's having a dilemma. He doesn't want to pick the side. 
but isn't the idea of like cattle and stuff and they're they're overproducing of this methane a little bit of a myth though isn't that like the least it's it's actually the, the highest it, it it's the highest percentage of what, what we're doing our combined industrial factories and such that are not as bad as what the meat industry is doing oh yeah yeah, yeah. we uh -huh. stop it methane is <laughs> far far worse than the other greenhouse gases it's 80 times the greenhouse gas that co2 is yeah wow it's not as bad there was a there was a there was a website or a or a documentary um that was done several years ago that claimed that it was this like astronomical number they were wrong it was it was too high their number that they cited was too high but it's still really high and like i said meth um, methane is is more destructive than co2 yeah and so my having an objection to eating pythons after i care for pythons my favorite snake in my collection is a reticulated python who is even though i have dogs with me i have a puppy i'm touching a puppy right now but my my puppy is my reticulated python and the idea of eating a python is so so uh, disturbs me so much but then i've had my 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 daughter's pet pig i've had my daughter's pig in my house and as a consequence of that i've kind of lost my taste for bacon oh really i'm having a hell of a time eating pork because i loved that pig i'm canadian that's a tough that's a that's a leap for me <laughs> i won't eat be... for the same <laughs> reason they're they're too they're too damn smart to I, i've never met a pig before so i might have that same reaction but i'm a good german woman and trying to pry pork away from you it, you'll be prying it from my cold dead hands um but i, I oct octopus i had to i had to stop because they're they're way too smart i i get you that's and that's the that's the bias that we have the more intelligence that it has the, the less you want to eat it. When I was in Germany, I have to say, I was like, well, okay, what's the traditional German food? Well, we're going to take you to a German restaurant. We're going to give you the traditional German meal. And they bring out a plate, I guess about yay, right? Just mm -hmm. like yay. A and platter. it's stacked this high with just meat. Mm -hmm. It's just slices of meat. This In my high. house, in my house, it wasn't finish your vegetables. It was, <laughs> you have to finish your meat. Well, yeah. I, 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 I might have y'all a little bit beaten on this because my dad literally wrote a carnivore diet book called Neander Thin, Eat Like a Caveman. And we <laughs> only, like my baby food was pemmican, which is like, you know, ground up beef jerky congealed in animal fat. Like I was not allowed to eat carbs as well, a kid. I, it was all meat. <laughs> and I realized my hypocrisy because my favorite food is biltong. When I went to South Africa and I discovered Biltong, I had that shit every day the whole time I was there. I have a South African friend in Colorado who sometimes makes me Biltong and ships it to me. <laughs> well, this yeah. is my cow, Aria. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> She's a big girl. Yeah. She's naughty. She's 120 pounds of pain in the ass. but <laughs> okay, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, you know what? This thing sits right in the sweet spot for this show. I love it when it's an hour. It's bite size. It's great. Arn, um, assuming the check we sent doesn't bounce, will you come back again? <laughs> I I could be convinced to do so. Yes. Oh, amazing! That would be amazing. Provided I receive the check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there, 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 there's no check. Just, just, so you know, just, just to be clear. All right. Okay. 